Hello. In a previous chapter, I've shown how to analyze a beam as beam elements, and then it's quite easy to apply the fixtures in a, in such an analysis. But then in chapter 17, yeah, you are supposed to do uh, a similar analysis, but then with shell elements, and that requires more advanced restraints. So in this video, I want to show from chapter 16 and 17 in this book, so how you can apply the restraints to a circular beam, so a, a circle section of a beam. So I'm gonna set that up now, I'm gonna create a new file and I'll draw a cylinder on this side, so draw a circle and then uh, not use a default extrude but choose surfaces and then extruded surface. So now we get a, a thin sheet of material uh, like this and now I want to apply similar restraints as uh, similar restraints to the restraints that I've used in the beam analysis in chapter 16 so I can do that most conveniently by using this surface as a split line so I'll choose insert curve split line and then I'll use intersection so if I wait here I see what the splitting body should be that should be the top plane and this should be the body that is split and the advantage of that is that now I have points here that I can apply my restraints to. So I'm going to save this file uh, as uh, restraints. Like that. I'm going to create a new study. And then I'm going to apply the restraints in uh, the best way possible to be compared to a beam analysis. So I'm going to fix the geometry over here. I'll choose a point that I'll fix and in this case I'll choose immovable so no translation so it can still rotate and by applying fixtures to the other points I'll prevent this part from moving and rotating completely so after that one I'll choose fixed geometry for this point as well so this point shouldn't be fixed but I want more advanced settings so I find them under the advanced settings here. Use reference geometry. I want to have a plane as a reference. I'll choose the top plane. And now I can specify what I want to restrain over here. So I, I don't want it to move normal, perpendicular to the surface. And let me just test this button. And I see that this, this direction of this point should be still able to move. This direction not. So this is the way I should look at the green arrows and see what I want to prevent from moving. So now, now that I've set this up, this beam can still rotate around the y-axis. So that's what I'm going to prevent by applying a last restraint to these two points. So I'll use fixed geometry, uh, choose these two points, and again use reference geometry over here. It's m most of the time a very convenient way to uh, control your restraints. In this direction I don't want the part to move. You can see the arrows here, that's what I wanted to accomplish. And here you can also restrain rotation, but that's not necessary in this case. So now I've set this part up similar to the beam analysis. I'll uh, save it and then uh, test it to see if I did it correctly. I'll put a force on this surface and this surface in this direction, the direction of the top plane, and then I want to have it in the reverse direction, and then in total I want 100 newton. So by choosing total over here, it will divide 100 newton over the two surfaces instead of 100 newton per surface, which would result in 200 newton in total. So now let's see. I've uh, set this up. I've not yet defined the thickness. So if I if I now run the model, it will warn me that I shil still should specify the thickness. You see it over here, so then I'll edit it here. Uh, edit definition, and I want a shell with, for example, a plate thickness, uh, a, a thickness inside the cylinder of two millimeter. Here I can choose between thin and thick. If you take thick, then it will also take shear stresses into account, whereas if you use thin, it won't do that. So more information can be found on this help if you search over here. Alright, and now I've specified the thickness so it should be uh, ready to run this analysis. 
and I see a strange deformed shape over here it's uh, completely exaggerated so over 19,000 times exaggerated this is not what really would happen but you can imagine that uh, these points if you exaggerate it the, the structure will buckle onto itself a little bit so um, this is not 100% correct of course for this situation in reality because normally you don't restrain the points exactly over here but what you can do now is just uh, look at the way the, the beam uh, moves so how much it moves in the middle section I can for example look at the displacement and I see a maximum displacement in the middle of uh, 2.4 E minus 3 so uh, two thousandths of a millimeter it's a very low force and as you can see here it's exaggerated I can change that by uh, here specifying that I want to see true scale so not exaggeration of the the form shape in any way so now uh, with this simulation I've imitated the the beam analysis as good as possible for a round surface so that's uh, what corresponds to the uh, student task in this book so that's what I wanted to show you thanks for watching